Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is Yahua. I'm doing a PhD at the University of Melbourne. It's finally winter break here in Australia. After a busy semester, I finally have some time to sit down and chat with you about my whole experience of teaching at the university. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you how I got into this position, how I felt, what I learned, the fun and the challenging parts, all that jazz. As a disclaimer, my teaching experience is actually quite limited because I have been only teaching for a year but then I still feel that it's worth sharing my experience with all of you if you are curious how your tutor felt when they first started or if you want to pursue something similar in the future please keep on watching firstly I often got comments asking me these questions how to get a teaching job at a university this one is actually not too hard to answer what did Ariana Grande say? I see it, I like it, I want it, I got it. Yeah. It's just that simple. So I saw on Uni's website that the faculty released some recruitment information to the public. Once I saw it, I just throw my CV and a cover letter to them and apply for it. Personally, I think teaching is one of the boxes that I should take while doing a PhD and my supervisors, they are quite supportive. They actually encourage me to gain more teaching experience. That's why I can do what I want while slowly working on my research project. So, how is the whole experience? Mm, I would say it's bittersweet, but let's just begin with the good part. When I heard my students said they really enjoy my class or when I saw my students have some great ideas in their essays, I would be like, everything I did was worth it. And I also learned a lot from teaching. The first things that I learned is that perhaps avoid dressing like a student in the first ever class. Because most universities in Australia, they don't have strict dress code requirements. So basically you can wear whatever you feel comfortable to the school. I remember the first day that I started teaching, I put on a white t-shirt and a pair of blue jeans and also a backpack, you know, classic me. Just put on simple outfits without thinking. But then after I came to school, I look around. And I find that I look more like a freshman than my undergrad students. I feel like while we're waiting outside of the classroom, no one's gonna tell that I was the tutor until I walked to the front of the classroom and started talking. So since then, I always carry a shoulder bag, just a small effort to distinguish myself from a bunch of college students. Apart from the dress code, another thing that I find is that my presentation and communication skills improve a lot. I feel that I can speak English more naturally, which is very different from the time that I first came to Australia. Australia. Back in the day, whenever I wanted to say something, I would do a little draft in my head before I spoke up. But now I can say whatever I want without hesitation. Maybe because I make English videos from time to time, or maybe it's because I need to use English in a professional settings and I need to explain complex theories to my students and then to communicate with them. All these factors allow me to speak English with confidence, so practice is the key. But I know that lots of people might not have opportunities to use English or practice it in everyday life. So here I want to introduce you my old friend Cambly, an online platform where you can meet people around the world and chat with English native speakers. This time I talked to some tutors on Cambly and chat about their experience of teaching and I find that I wasn't the only one who felt nervous when first started teaching. So how long have you been teaching? Uh, I've been actually teaching English for about 20 years actually 20 but years yeah yeah i've been teaching english forever let's say 20 years ago do you still remember the time when you just started teaching? i remember everyone i remember the class and everything it was nerve-wracking i was i was so nervous actually um i started out teaching adults professional company workers they had an idea about what they wanted from a teacher and i could see that immediately and so i was kind of terrified it ended up turning out to what they said was we could tell that he's basically a new teacher but he's very passionate about what he does. <laughs> they told you that? Yeah, yeah, but it was okay. I liked the constructive criticism. It made me understand the, like how I had to be from, from then on. You're more than welcome to check out Cambly if you also want to chat with people around the world and practice English. Like I said before, teaching is a bittersweet process. One of the biggest challenges is managing stress. As I gained more experience, I felt less nervous than I did for the first time, but still, I can't avoid stress. I think you can probably relate to this. Anxiety-induced insomnia. 
like your brain is too active at night and you're thinking about something all the time so that you have trouble falling asleep. This is basically me on every Tuesday night because all of my classes in last semester were arranged on Wednesday. On Tuesday night, I usually went through all the lesson plan in my head. Like I would think about how I'm gonna explain new knowledge and what kind of class activities that I should add into the class, etc. Too much thinking about work and I can't sleep. But then once I finish my classes on Wednesday, I wouldn't have this problem of insomnia anymore. That's why that's a big challenge for me. I think as a new tutor, I can't let go of this thinking that what if I screw up everything in the class and what if I am not qualified enough to teach. But I guess once you gain more experience and be more familiar with the whole process, I think it wouldn't be a problem anymore. And another challenge is multitasking, as always. So the difference between a full-time university staff and a full-time PhD student while doing part-time teaching on the side is that we have an ongoing PhD project. Once you have all these things that you need to think about how you can manage your time more efficiently, balancing between teaching and researching and also doing something creative, for example, making videos and maintaining your social life while living a healthy lifestyle. I mean, it's really not easy, but I believe we can do it. All right, that's all for me today. Once I started teaching, I realized that it's indeed not an easy job, and I pay my respects to all the teachers. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave your comments down below, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next one. Bye!